Bonjour, French 2 students. Here is your teaching video for Lesson 15, Parts A and B, covering pages 216 to 220 in your textbook. So, Lesson 15 au Café de l'Univers. Please follow along as I read. Où vas-tu après les cours? Est-ce que tu vas directement chez toi? Valérie, elle, ne va pas directement chez elle. Elle va au Café de l'Univers avec ses copines Fatima et Zania. Elle vient souvent ici avec elle. À la table de Valérie, la conversation est toujours très animée. De quoi parlent les filles aujourd'hui? Est-ce qu'elles parlent de l'examen d'histoire? Est-ce qu'elles parlent du problème de maths? Est-ce qu'elles parlent de la classe de sciences? Non. Est-ce qu'elles parlent du week-end prochain? Est-ce qu'elle parle des vacances? Non plus. Est-ce qu'elle parle du nouveau copain de Marie-Claire? Est-ce qu'elle parle de la cousine de Pauline? Est-ce qu'elle parle des amis de Véronique? Pas du tout. Aujourd'hui, les filles parlent d'un sujet beaucoup plus important. Elles parlent du nouveau prof d'anglais. C'est un jeune professeur américain. Il est très intéressant, très amusant, très sympathique et surtout, il est très mignon. So, you should be working through the translation of this. Okay. So, we start out or the starts out by asking, where do you go after school? Do you go straight home? Valerie, her, she does not go straight to her house. She goes to the Universe Cafe with her friends Fatima and Zanya. She often comes here with them. At Valerie's table, the conversation is always very lively. About what are the girls talking today? Are they talking about the history test? Are they talking about the math problem? Are they talking about science class? No. Are they talking about next weekend? Are they talking about vacation? Not that either. Are they talking about Marie Claire's new boyfriend? Are they talking about Pauline's cousin? Are they talking about Veronica's friends? Not at all. Today, the girls are talking about a subject a lot more important. They're talking about the new English teacher. He's a young American teacher. He is very interesting, very funny, very nice, and above all, he is very cute. So taking a look at the look at the comprehension questions. Number one, we have où va Valérie après les cours? Valérie va au café de l'univers. De avec qui est-ce qu'elle va au café? Elle va au café avec Fatima et Zania. Numéro trois, qu'est-ce que les filles font au café? Elles parlent. Quatre, est-ce qu'elles parlent de l'école? Non. 
5. Est-ce qu'elle part des activités du week-end? Non. De quelle personne part-elle aujourd'hui? Elle parle du nouveau prof d'anglais. 7. De quelle nationalité est, est le professeur d'anglais? Il est américain. 8. Comment est-il? Il est intéressant, amusant, sympathique et mignon. Right, the note culturel again, they've switched over and they are now in French. So we have au café. On peut faire beaucoup de choses différentes dans un café français. On peut manger un sandwich. On peut commander un jus de fruits. On peut étudier. On peut jouer aux jeux électroniques. Dans les cybercafés, on peut aussi surfer sur l'Internet. Les gens français vont au café principalement pour retrouver leurs copains et passer un bon moment avec eux. Un café français est divisé en deux parties, l'intérieur et la terrasse. Au printemps et en été, les français préfèrent s'asseoir à la terrasse. Là, ils peuvent profiter du soleil et regarder les gens qui passent dans la rue. So the title tells us that this is going to be about the café. So in the café or at the café. So one can do a lot of different things in a French café. One can eat a sandwich. One can order fruit juice. One can study. One can play electronic games. In cyber cafes, one can also surf the internet. Young French people go to the cafe mainly to meet their friends and spend a good moment with them. So what do they mean by electronic games? I think they're referring to arcade type games. Remember our book's a little dated. So at the time our book was published, not every person had internet access. And if you had, so they had special internet cafes where you could go to use the internet. And then they talk about the fact that most of what the French do in a cafe, French young people, is they go there to hang out or spend quality time with their friends. A French cafe is divided in two parts, the interior and the terrace or outdoor section of a cafe. In the spring and in the summer, the French prefer to sit outside. There, they can enjoy the sun and watch the people who go by on the street. So, most French cafes have an interior and an exterior area, and most French people choose to sit on, in the exterior area so long as it's a nice day. Again, they like to watch people going by on the street. It's a pretty popular pastime for the French. So, we have a new verb, le verb venir. The verb venir, to come, is irregular. Note the forms of venir in the present tense. Remember, irregular for us means we have to memorize it. So, this is a verb that you do need to commit to, to memory. So, si vous plaît, répétez, venir. Venir, je viens, je viens, tu viens, tu viens, il vient, elle vient, nous venons, nous venons, 
Vous venez. Vous venez. Il vient. Elle vient. Now looking at the sentences over here, I'm going to say them and ask you to repeat them after me. S'il vous plaît, répétez. Nous allons venir avec des amis. Je viens avec toi. Est-ce que tu viens au café? Monique ne vient pas avec nous. Nous venons à cinq heures. À quelle heure venez-vous à la boum? Il vient de Paris, n'est-ce pas? So, again, kind of working through this conjugate, or what these sentences mean. Remember, our verb here means to come. So, this first sentence means, we are going to come with some friends. I am coming with you. Are you coming to the theater, or to the movie theater? Monique is not coming with us. We are coming at 5 o'clock. At what time are you coming to the party? They come from Paris, don't they? Or right? Revenir, to come back, is conjugated like venir. So to conjugate revenir, all you do is put the R-E on the front of the verb forms. So you just add an R-E in front of all of these. S'il vous plaît, répétez revenir. Je reviens. Tu reviens. Il revient. Nous revenons. Vous revenez. Elle revient. So we have the sentence here. So s'il vous plaît, répétez. À quelle heure revenez-vous? Nous revenons à 10 heures. So that first question is asking, at what time are you coming back? And we are coming back at 10 o'clock. Note the interrogative expression, do, from where. Okay? And that would be a question word that you would hear quite often as a French teenager. S'il vous plaît, répétez, do vient tu? Do vient tu? Okay, so where are you coming from? So we're going to practice with this new verb for exercise two, le pique-nique du club français. The French club has organized a picnic. Say who is coming and who is not. Okay, so we have Philippe and Non. That's our example prompt here. So what we're going to say is Philippe ne vient pas. So we're using that verb of the forms of the verb venir. Right, so we're using je viens, tu viens, and il or elle viennent, nous venons, vous venez, and il and elle pluriel. Vienne. And then remember, if we want to make these negative, oops, um, we just put those ne and pa in front of and behind them. Okay? So when they're negative, they'll have the ne and the pa in front and behind them.
So the example becomes Philippe ne vient pas. This is going to be a speaking, so I'm going to ask you to um, say it, and then you'll hear me confirm whether or not you did it correctly. So number one, we have Alice and we. Alice vient. Numero de Jean-Pierre and no. Jean-Pierre ne vient pas. Toi, Paul et Caroline and we. Oui. Paul et Caroline viennent. Numéro 4. Vous et non. Vous ne venez pas. Numéro 5. Je et oui. Je viens. Numéro 6. Nous et non. Nous ne venons pas. Numéro 7. Tu et non. Tu ne viens pas. Numéro 8. Le prof de français et oui. Le prof de français vient. Et 9. Le prof d'anglais et oui. Le prof d'anglais vient. Again, remember when we do these out loud, if you do need a little bit more time, you always can pause the video. So part B is la preposition de, de plus l'article défini. The preposition de has several meanings. So de can mean from, nous venons de la bibliothèque. De can mean of, quelle est l'adresse de l'école. And de could mean about. Je parle de mon copain. S'il vous plaît, répétez. Nous venons de la bibliothèque. Quelle est l'adresse de l'école? Je parle de mon copain. So hopefully that reminds you a little bit of the other um, little word that we learned in lesson 14, which was a, that had three meanings. It could mean at, in, or to. Okay, and so now we have de, meaning from, of, or about. So these are two little words in French that tend to have a lot of potential different meanings. And again, to decide which one it is, you really have to read the question or the sentence and kind of figure out which meaning is it. And just like the fact that the A ah had some contractions, de also forms contractions. Remember the difference between contractions in French and English? In English, contractions are optional, right? We can write do not, or we can write don't, and both of them are acceptable. However, in French, these contractions are not optional. Every single time you encounter these contractions and these two words together, you have to use the contraction. So note the forms of de plus definite article in the sentences below. Voici le café. Marc vient du café. Voici les Champs-Élysées. Nous venons des Champs-Élysées. Voici la piscine. Tu reviens de la piscine. Voici l'hôtel. Les touristes arrivent de l'hôtel. The preposition de contracts with le and le, but not with la and l apostrophe. So again, ones that form contraction are here, the de and the le and the de and the le, which is just like the a contractions. The ones that don't contract are the de la and the l apostrophe. So back up here at these sentences and looking at what they mean, right, we have here is the cafe, Mark is coming from the cafe. Here is the Champs-Élysées. We are coming from the Champs-Élysées. Here is the pool. 
you are coming back from the pool and here is the hotel, the tourists arrive from the hotel. S'il vous plaît, répétez, do, do, so it sounds like this word, so that might be a word you write in your notes to help you remember how to say it. S'il vous plaît, répétez, do, day, day, right, so this one sounds like this word, and again, that might be a word you write in your notes to help you remember how to say it. S'il vous plaît, répétez, day. De la, de la, de l'apostrophe. S'il vous plaît, répétez, du café, des magasins, de la plage, de l'école. There is liaison after day when the next word begins with a vowel sound. So, as always, any time in French we have words that end in an S like day does here, okay, we're going to hear those S's as a Z. So, we have où sont les livres des étudiants? S'il vous plaît, répétez, où sont les livres des étudiants? So, again, that question is asking, where are the students' books? So, again, a lot of similarities here between these verbs, right? So, in lesson 14, you learned the new irregular verb. So, one of the things that's similar about both of them is that they're both irregular, which means they're ones you have to memorize, okay? In lesson 14, you learned the irregular verb aller, which means to go. And the forms of aller were je vais. Tu va, il, elle, va, nous allons, vous allez, and again, we're hearing those S's as Z's, ad, nu, and vu, because this verb starts with a vowel, and il, and elle, pluriel, vont. So now we have a new irregular verb in this lesson, venir, which means to come. Now, in English, a lot of times we use these verbs the same way, but realistically, they're a little bit different, right? Um, typically, um, to go and to come sort of suggests different directions of movement. So remember, the new forms of venir that you've learned today are je viens, tu viens, il, elle, vienne. So although they all sound the same, right, the il and l form is spelled a little bit differently. It ends in the T. Nu venon. Vu vene. And il and l pluriel vien. Okay, so again, they both have in common that they are irregular verbs that you have to memorize. They also have in common the fact that they have these a ah into contractions. Remember, a ah means at, to, in. And oftentimes when you talk about going, you often are going to talk about going to, going in places. And so you use a ah contractions often with a ah l'air. And when we have an a ah followed by a l, remember it becomes o. An a ah followed by a l becomes o spelled with an x. A ah la or a ah l apostrophe stays a ah l apostrophe. And a ah and la stay the same. Okay. Now, de is our new one today, and we learned that de means from, of, or about. Again, when we talk about coming, we often talk about coming from. And so, we often use veneer with a de contraction. Again, the similarities continue in that when we have de followed by a le, we have that contraction of do. 
And when we have a de followed by le, it becomes de. De and l apostrophe stay de l apostrophe, and de and la stay de la. So again, a lot of similarities between these verbs. S'il vous plaît, répétez à l'air. Je vais. Tu vas. Il va. Nous allons. Vous allez. Ils vont. Oh. Oh. À l'apostrophe. À la. Venir. Je viens. Tu viens. Ils viennent. Nous venons. Vous venez. Ils viennent. Du. De. De l'apostrophe. De la. So a lot of similarities with these verbs and as well as these contractions. So we're going to take a look at exercise 3 on page 219, Rendez-vous. The following students live in Paris. On a Saturday afternoon, they are meeting in a cafe. Say where each one is coming from. So notice that our example prompt is Jacques and Le Musée d'Orsay. So our sentence becomes Jacques vient du Musée d'Orsay. Now it became du because this was le, right? So when I have a de followed by a le, it has to become du. So the first thing you're going to do in all of these sentences, right, is you're going to use the subject they've given you. Then you're going to conjugate the new verb, vanier. And then you're going to use de and possibly a de contraction. Right? Remember for the de contractions, it's de and le and de and le, which becomes de. And then you're going to use whatever else is in that sentence. And this is going to be a speaking one. So you're going to say these. Okay? So looking at number one, we have Sylvie and Le Louvre. Sylvie vient du Louvre. De Isabelle, le Parc de la Valette. Isabelle vient du Parc de la Valette. Toi, Jean-Paul, le Centre Pompidou. Jean-Paul vient du Centre Pompidou. Numéro 4. François, le Quartier Latin. François vient du Quartier Latin. Cinq, Cécile, l'avenue de l'Opéra. Cécile vient de l'avenue de l'Opéra. Six, Nicole, la Tour Eiffel. Nicole vient de la Tour Eiffel. Sept, Marc, le jardin du Luxembourg. Marc vient du jardin du Luxembourg. Huit, André, les Champs-Élysées. André vient des Champs-Élysées. Neuf, Pierre, les Galeries Lafayette. Pierre vient des Galeries Lafayette. Dix, Corinne, la Rue Bonaparte. Corinne vient de la Rue Bonaparte. Tournez la page, s'il vous plaît. We have exercise four, which we will do out loud as well. Du vient tu. During vacation, Olivier goes out every day. When he gets home, his sister Sophie asks him where he is coming from. So I'll ask you the question, du vient tu, and then you're going to answer. So the first example, right, our example is Marty. So we see Marty, he goes to Le Cyber Café. So it becomes, je viens du cyber café. So the je viens is going to stay the same every time. And then again, I might use de if it's a masculine. 
if it was le. I might use de if it was le. I'm going to use de la or de l'apostrophe, depending upon what I see here. S'il vous plaît, répétez, je viens. Je viens. So, numéro un, du viens tu. Je viens du restaurant. Numéro deux, du viens tu. Je viens de la bibliothèque. Numéro trois, vendredi, du viens tu. Je viens du concert de rock. Numéro quatre, dimanche, du viens tu. Je viens de la boom de Steph or Christine. Cinq, samedi, du viens tu. Je viens du pique-nique de Monique. Six, jeudi, du viens tu. Je viens de l'opéra. All right, so because you've learned these a and de contractions, we're going to talk then about les sports, les jeux et la musique. So, les sports, s'il vous plaît, répétez le foot, le football, le basket, le basketball, le ping-pong, le ping-pong, le volley, le volleyball, le tennis, le tennis, le baseball, le baseball. So those are some sports that some of you might play. Here are some games that you might play. S'il vous plaît, répétez les jeux, les jeux, les échecs, les échecs, les jeux vidéo, les jeux vidéo. Les jeux d'ordinateur, les jeux d'ordinateur, les dames, les dames, les cartes, les cartes. And then we have some musical instruments. S'il vous plaît, répétez les instruments de musique, les instruments de musique. Le piano, le piano, le violon, le violon, le saxo, le saxophone, le clavier, le clavier, la flûte, la flûte. La guitare, la guitare, la clarinette, la clarinette, la batterie, la batterie. Now, why is this important? Because when you talk about playing a sport or game, you use these are contractions. So it's going to be joué O, joué O, joué A à l'apostrophe, joué A la. When you talk about playing an instrument, you use joué and a de contraction. So when you're talking about a masculine singular instrument, it's going to be joué du, joué de. Jouer de l'apostrophe, jouer de la. So, again, just kind of remember um, these verb. This is a regular ER verb. So, remember the forms of jouer are je, joue, tu, joue, il or elle, joue. Nu jouons, 
vous jouez and il and l pluriel ju So again the idea is okay because these are sports or games these are going to use those a ah contractions and because these are musical instruments they're going to use those du contractions so we're going to use this information to do this last exercise, exercise five, saying activité. Ask your classmates if they follow, play the following instruments and games. I think what we will do here is we'll just do the question each time. So our example, our picture is ping pong. So we have asque tu ju o ping pong. So remember the part of this that is going to stay the same every time is the esca to ju. Now this became o because ping pong is le ping pong. And so it became o. And because it's a sport or a game, it uses that a ah contraction. Our second example, we see the picture of the piano. So we have esca to ju do piano. This time it became do because this is an instrument, so we use a do contraction with an instrument. And because piano is masculine, it becomes do. So we're just going to do the questions here. Um, in case you're not familiar with the uh, instruments, number one is meant to be a guitar, two is meant to be a flute, Three is meant to be basketball. Four is meant to be a clarinet. Five is the drums. Six is chess. Seven is checkers. Eight is cards. Nine is the violin. And ten is tennis. So for number one, how would you ask somebody if they play the guitar? Est-ce que tu joues de la guitare? For number two, for the flute. Est-ce que tu joues de la flute? Numéro trois, basketball. Est-ce que tu joues au basket? Numéro quatre, the clarinet. Est-ce que tu joues de la clarinet? Numéro cinq. Drums. Est-ce que tu joues de la batterie? Numéro six, checkers. Est-ce que tu joues aux échecs? Numéro sept, checkers. So six was chess, sorry, seven is checkers. Est-ce que tu joues aux dames? Wheat, cards. Est-ce que tu joues aux cartes? Neuf, violin. Est-ce que tu joues du violon? Indice. Est-ce que tu joues au teddy? So your homework, remember you're setting up your paper. You may either type your homework assignment in Google Docs or handwrite it out if you prefer. Um, either way, it has to be submitted for the assignment in Google Classroom. Your homework is on page 218, exercise 2, and on page 219, exercise 3. Exercise 2 was Le Picnique du Club Francais. We did this one out loud. Remember, um, if it's a no, right, you're going to have a ne verb pa in your sentence, and your verb is always going to be the conjugated form of the verb vernier. Okay, so um, if it's not negative, then it's just going to be the subject that they give you and then the verb veneer. So this is about practicing conjugating your forms of the verb veneer. Exercise three, okay, 
Again, we did this one out loud. This is the one where you said where people were coming from. So this was about um, practicing both the forms of the verb venir and also the de contractions. So this is about conjugating your verb venir, your new verb, and using those de contractions. Do not forget that you have a quiz tomorrow over at Lesson 14. Au revoir, à demain.